Of all the groups that go out um, for Missions Week from TCS, we are uniquely blessed in that we get to introduce you personally to the friends that we went to serve. So please welcome our friends from High Point Village. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Harley and Emily Kate are going to kind of describe the different things that we, that we did. Uh, during the week, and then we're going to hear from several several of the villagers. Then we're going to hear from a couple of our people. Okay, so one of the really cool things we got to do while we were there is go to Catholic Charities, and that's where um, some of the villagers and some of the Trinity students just got to go there and um, fold clothes and just be a blessing to that ministry. So that was really fun um, just to, like, experience that. Um, then we did fitness every day, and um, you just, like, get to, like, get to work out with, like, a one of them, and it was really fun because it was, like, just getting to know one of them better by then, just not just sitting and talking to them, but actually getting to, like, do hands-on activities with them. Then the first, one of the first days we went bowling, and um, I found out that I'm not good at bowling. <laughs> um, and they're really good at it, so that does not. Um, and then we got to do a dance party. They love to dance. Like, they're so good at it, and they love it. Um, and then we got to do handbells. They taught us how to do handbells. They are really, really, really talented in that area where I'm not. <laughs> um, we did crafts every single day with them, and it was just like different things like beading and weaving and all the stuff. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so another day we did water aerobics, and we got to do water activities with all of them. And again, they're really good at it, and we're all terrible at it. And then um, we did Meals on Wheels. Well, some of the Trinity students on the same day that we did Catholic Charities, some students did Meals on Wheels with um, the High Point Villagers. And so that was really fun, just getting to bless them. And then we did the National Ranch and Heritage Center. And we got to have different groups, and we just got to walk around with the villagers and talk with them and just learn some history with them. And that was really fun, but it was really hot that day. So 
um, we do devotional like every morning, and um, we had different villagers pray at the end, and that was really sweet, and we got to just um, relate with each other and grow closer with Christ and each other in that. And then Trinity loves High Point. We got to just love on them this whole entire week, well, that whole entire week, and it was really fun. We got to just be able to grow with them, and I had a really great time, so yeah. Well, uh, I was going into High Point, and I didn't really know quite what to expect, but, um, and so I didn't really know how much, like, we'd actually be able to do, but I ended up having, like, the most fun I've ever had in my whole life. Like, I love all of them so much, and I wish we could go back, like, every week. <laughs> yeah, so it was so fun. <laughs> Um, uh, it's just like a trip for learning something, and because before we go there, it's kind of, we're thinking we're going to go to help them and serve them, but actually when you go there, you just find that you can help nothing, and <laughs> basically you just like hang out with them, and like, you can learn a lot of things from them, because they're just so, so loved by God and just and they love God too and re and they really understand and know that and they're just so clean inside so should I say that and just just I don't know how to say that just when you like stay with them you just like forget everything and just feel really relaxed and and uh oh so like I think if eighth grade, when you go to like freshman, I think this is the like best one for you to go on first year in high school because it's just really good and <laughs> So for a special treat, we have some of the villagers who are going to talk to you about their experience with us being with them. We did Cranky with High Point Village. We had fun with them. We went to water aerobics with them. Yes. Who was the best dancer out of the group? Young Bean. I said Brady. We went to a bowling We had fun. So we just want to tell you that this was such a blessing to our students and to us. Um, I know many of you traveled outside of the, the city of Lubbock, but our travels within Lubbock were so filled with love. And to see how much all of the villagers truly love God and how much they love each other was such a blessing to us. And so we're really glad we had this opportunity. Thank you. We love you, Trinity. <laughs> Let's take a seat. We'll, we'll just lay them down. I don't know who's second. Ah. Okay, Bayless, if you want to go ahead and come up. Hang 
going, right here. Okay, this is a great group to work with, and I was so excited that I personally hadn't had all these kids in class, so I got to know some of them so much better. They were a blast. We had a good week. They worked very, very hard. I'm going to share with you the greatest thing that happened to me that week, and then I'm going to let a couple of you guys share. But one morning, we were uh, walking down the hall, and you know how we always tell you when you go off campus how that you represent Trinity and you represent most of all Jesus Christ. And so we were walking down the hall and the kids were on their way to the classroom and we met a class and all of a sudden this little guy says, oh, it's Trinity. I mean, he was so excited that we were there and it made me feel so humbled because they were so excited that we were there on their campus. The teachers were so kind to us. They blessed us, I would say, almost as much, if not more, than we blessed them. It was a great relationship that we had with them. We wanted them to come, but there's 835 kids in this elementary, so there was no way. But they love us there. It's a great project. We plan on going back. So, Ezra? They, uh, the kids really loved us. They were all over us the whole week, and like they would be hugging us. They wanted us to play with them, help them with math or homework and read with them, and we just tried to do everything we could just to be a blessing to them, and pretty much we were in the kind of environment to where we weren't allowed to talk about Jesus by law. We weren't allowed to, so we had to pretty much show them and the Bible, and John is like, they'll know you by your fruits, and then like, they'll know you're my disciple through your love. So that's what we had to do. We just had to show them, to show them love, kindness, and just give them our full attention. And at the end of the week, it was kind of really hard because it was like eight kids hugging me at once, but we couldn't hug them back. So I was like, well, they didn't hug me, but I couldn't really hug them back. So yeah. Okay, so like uh, like Ezra said, I mean, it was an environment that we couldn't really talk to the kids about God, but it was great to just show kids who God is. I mean, I was able to, I mean, just like in the time we were there, I was like talking to some kids and, you know, they're just like, wow, you are so nice. And I was just like, well, thank you. <laughs> and and, uh, and so they said, you're from, you're from, you're from Trinity Church. And I was like, yeah. And and they were all like, I go to that church, and now I want to go to that church, you know, and it was, it was great. It was just, it was good. So, yeah. Okay, showing them the love of Christ was the biggest goal we had. So watch the faces of the kids and the teachers when you see the video. Thank you.
giant rise Catch the demons by surprise Holy nation sanctified Let this be a battle cry Ready yourselves Ready yourselves Let us shine the light of Jesus in Yeah, isn't it amazing how a man can find himself alone? Calling to the darkness for an answer that he's never known. Yeah, isn't it amazing how God can take a broken man? Yeah, let him find a fortune, let him ruin it with his own two hands. And he climbs on up the hill, on the rock on which he stands. He looks back at the crowd, he looks down at his hands and he says, I am a difference maker. Oh, I am a difference maker. Oh, to the darkness for an answer that he's never known yeah isn't it amazing how a god can take a broken man yeah let him find a fortune let him ruin it with his own two hands he walks on up the hill to the rock on which he stands back at the crowd he looks down at his hands and he says I am the difference maker oh, I am the difference maker oh I am the only one that speaks to him and I am the friendliest of friends of God Nearly everything I've seen And I have felt the fire Get put out by too much gasoline and we're all strangers Passing through a place in town an Afternoon, life is but a vision In a window that we're peeking through Help 
this conversation with a man who says he cares a lot. It's a massive confrontation about who might throw a punch or not. We are all transgressors, we're all sinners, we're all astronauts. So if you're beating death, then raise your hand, but shut up if you're not. Cause I am a difference maker, oh I am only one who speaks to him. Okay, if you're on Portland, y'all come up. So this video does not depict because we cannot show um, all the homeless ministry that we got to do because you cannot take pictures of homeless um, within the Portland area. So let me give you some statistics on Portland. Um, if you don't know, Portland is in the United States. <laughs> it's in Oregon in the far corner. Only 3% of people believe in Jesus in the city of Oregon. So whenever we talk about like going on mission trips, the United States of America, like we need Jesus here. So um, our group got to do um, missions work with the homeless. And this is my third time on this trip. And the first time I went, I was like, ah, no big deal. And it like challenged me because you see things that you've never seen before. When we say the homeless ministry, I'm talking about thousands upon thousands of homeless people. And smells that you cannot even, like, we can't tell you because it, it just breaks your heart. And so one of the things that I love, love, love about this team is this year every single one of these kids signed up for this trip because the Lord dealt with their heart that this is where they needed to go. We didn't have a kid on this trip, a student that signed up because they're like, oh, my buddy signed up. Every single one of these students signed up because they were like, I felt like the Lord called me to do this. And can I tell you that we had an amazing, an amazing trip this year and that these students loved each other so well and we had such unity on this trip and we prepared. We prayed and put in the time and Miss Sosabi did an awesome job of preparing the team. And so they're going to share stories of some of the interactions we had because I promised the video, we did not go out to eat like it looked like we did. We just didn't have that many pictures um, because we can't fully um, show you in pictures, but hopefully our words can show you what the Lord did on this trip. So we're going to have each of the kids um, kind of share some of the things. Okay, first I'm going to give a shout out to Coach Bowen. Uh, a lot of you don't know, but this is our fourth trip together, which is pretty awesome for me. So she's like kind of turned into my mom. So that's been pretty cool, and you can ask her about carrying me to the airport because I take a lot of dream of me, and it just doesn't end well. But um, So that's been pretty cool. But uh, one, like she said, we can't show pictures of uh, the homeless people, which is kind of sad because we wish we could show you, but uh, we can talk about it. But one thing that uh, I think a lot of all, everyone should know um, about Portland is that there's a ton of homeless people there. And the reason is because the surrounding cities don't want homeless people in their cities, so they will literally go up to the homeless give them a bus ticket and say, here, go to Portland. And they'll just drive into Portland. And so it's like overflowing with homeless people. And it's also illegal in some fashion to be homeless in Portland because you can't sleep on the streets or on the sidewalks. And so it's just a giant mess. Like it's, a, it's horrible. 
No one knows what's going on. It's terrible. But um, one really cool experience we had as a group is there's a thing called Night Strike. And so all the homeless people go to this bridge. Uh, it's called Burnside Bridge. And underneath there, they can get their feet washed. They can uh, get their hair cut. They can get food. Uh, they can get clothes. And so we were going down there to serve. And uh, me, Jet's mom, my best friend, uh, Channing and Yachting all were going to give out clothes. And so we're like, okay, that'll be cool. So we're volunteering with other people that just showed up in the city. And so we're all like, whatever, this will be great. Um, and so we're up there volunteering, and you like, they like give their order for clothes, and we look and see if we can find them, and they come back later to get their order. And so Kara and Yachting are back there taking orders and finding clothes. And me and Mrs. Buchanan are yelling out the numbers for people to come get their order. And we're just doing our thing, and all of a sudden we look back, and all the other volunteers from the city just like disappeared. Like they were just gone. And I just looked at the guy who was running it, and he was like, yeah, dude, I don't know, they just, they just left. And we were like, oh, this is great. And so uh, Jet and Ben are just wandering aimlessly. Who knows why? Jet, yeah. I don't know why I said Jet. True. <laughs> same thing, honestly, same thing. <laughs> true, true and Ben are wandering aimlessly. And we're like, hey, we know y'all. Come help us. And so it was cool to see how when other people just kind of abandoned the job, uh, the whole team of Trinity, shouts out to Team Trinity, uh, came together and we were able to get the job done. But while we were doing that, um, we gave a, a man clothes and he apparently did not like the clothes he got and said a lot of things that I legally can't say in here. And <laughs> he got the clothes and like threw them up in the air and they were flying everywhere. And he got upset and took his bag and left. We were like, okay, well, there's the downside of homeless ministry. And uh, like 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later, comes back, and we just see a white bag fly out of nowhere, and it just smacks Channing. So she get, the homeless guy apparently came back, threw the bag at Channing, was really upset. Yachting was sad because she picked out the clothes, and he didn't <laughs> like them. Uh, but in the midst of all that, it was really cool because I was hanging out with these homeless guys, and they were really, really upset that the other homeless guy had came back and gotten upset with us, um, or had gotten upset with us, and he was saying, look, like, I know that we're in a super unfortunate situation, but um, we're people, and we understand that you're people, and you're here just to help us, and you're doing all you can, and so we're, we're really upset that he did that, and one of the homeless guys even got super mad and grabbed the white bag and went back across the street and threw it back at the homeless guy, <laughs> so it was like, it was, it was, it was really surreal. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was just like, wow, this is nuts, <laughs> but... But, uh, yeah, it was cool. That was a really cool moment we got to have. And so, yeah. All right. So when we were in Portland, we went to a place called the Union Gospel Mission. And um, basically it's just where we serve, like, snacks or donuts to the homeless, and they get to watch a movie and just uh, hang out there for, like, two hours, and you just get to sit down and talk with them. So the first day we were there, I uh, went up to someone, and I tried to talk to them, and, they kind of shunned me and turned me away, so I was a little feeling discouraged. I talked to another person, and they also turned me down. So I just sat down, and um, this homeless couple actually just walked up to me and started talking to me. And um, they asked me, like, what I was doing. I said, we're on a mission trip, and we're from Texas. And they said, oh, Texas, it's here. It's really hot down there. And I said, yeah, well, it's been uh, crazy weather down there. And they were like, well, I've always wanted to be somewhere where it's hot because you're in Portland and stuff is raining and all that. And I just got to talk to them about their everyday lives, and then I asked them what their story was. And so the woman of the couple shared her story first, and um, it was just hard to take in. And then the man shared his story, and it was even worse. So um, I got to talking to them, and I was just, like, feeling compassionate for them. And I asked them what religion they were, and they were like, well, we're wicked. And I was like, well, what is that? And they were like, we worship in, like, we do witchcraft, and we see fortune tellers, and I was like, oh, okay, well, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a Christian, and uh, they're like, oh, you can tell that's why you're here on this mission trip, and I said, well, I'm actually here to just, like, come for y'all, and uh, so they said that was cool, and I just asked if I could pray for them, and they, uh, at first, they were a little, like, hesitant, but they said yes, and so they said, before I prayed, they said, could you just pray that you just let us do the good things because here in our situation it's so hard to do good with so many people looking at us weird and people just not really coming up to us and so I said sure I'll let you 
I'll pray for you, and uh, I just pray for them that they uh, just continue to live out their lives, and they just do good, and that they will be saved. So. Okay. I haven't really prepared that much, so I'm just going to... Okay. <laughs> Um, so whenever you're doing homeless ministry, there's a lot of different types of people that you encounter. And so that's something that's definitely interesting. And, um, so for example, uh, on one of the first days we were going, giving sack lunches to homeless people. And, um, it was me and it was Clayton and it was Camille. And we were walking around trying to find a homeless person to give lunch to. We could not find one. So we finally found a guy and, uh, I asked him what his name was, said his name was Brad. So we sat down with him. Little did I know this dude was just... And it's pretty sad, but he was covered head to toe in, in poop, so he smelled really bad. And uh, we started talking to him, and uh, he was kind of rambling on about different things that didn't make a whole lot of sense. And uh, so I asked him where he was born, where he was from. And he goes, I was born under the flash and red light. And he started rocking back and forth, saying, I was born under the flash and red light. And so like, I look back at Camille and Clayton, and we're like, Let's get out of here. So, uh, <laughs> we we got up and, and and we went away. But there's also there's also uh, um, good good things that you encounter in homeless ministry. So we went to the Union Gospel Mission, like the place that Clayton described before, and um, there was a guy that I sat down with named Nick, and uh, we I was talking to him and he was uh, telling me about how he was pursuing or had been pursuing a. Uh, um, liberal arts education at a school in Michigan, and then he had to leave the university because he was schizophrenic. So he uh, kind of went crazy and hurt somebody or something, so he had to leave. And so uh, all he had left was two guitars and a van. So he would drive around and he would play uh, his two guitars, and that's how he would get his money is he would perform on the side of the street. Uh, and so it really helped me to relate to him, I guess, in a way, because I like playing guitar. And uh, yeah, so... Um, his guitars got stolen, and his van got stolen, so unfortunately, he could not perform for money anymore, and he said that's all he wanted was it was a guitar, so it just, it, it really helped to put things in perspective for me, because um, it helped me to put myself in, in his shoes, because he's somebody that likes guitar, I'm somebody that likes guitar, we just talked music for, for about an hour, so um, it's, it, it really uh, fostered empathy within me for homeless people, and also uh, through that, it compelled me to go do more work for homeless people because oftentimes um, it's not their own fault. They're not like lazy bums that just say, oh, I want handouts, I'm going to be homeless. They are often victims of their circumstances, uh, as in, you know, they have mental illnesses like he did or, um, you know, lose their job, whatnot. So, yeah. So based on the clothing incident, if that guy knew that I hand that white shirt to him, I would not be standing here. <laughs> so thank you, Jesus, for that. <laughs> okay, I'm Ellie B. I got this name from J Mac. Anywho, um, my favorite memory is when everyone in this group was praying for me and my family. I was baptized last Easter. I, I got so excited and I plan to share with my family. However, I was not able to hold a conversation with, uh, about God with my parents. They didn't even accept it when I revealed myself as someone with a biblical worldview. Um, so I excused myself by thinking that I still have time until one of my uncles died several weeks ago. That was the first time I've ever experienced a death in my family. And I realized that I don't have time to waste. So when I chose Portland, I knew I, want, I wanted God to give me strength and courage. Um, it was challenging for me because of my personality, but I did step out my comfort zone and talk to people. Even though the first lady I went up to, she said, leave her, leave her alone but it was a huge step for me. So um, I feel like God really um, worked in me during Missions Week, and I'm really thankful for this group. So thank you. <laughs> All right, well, for me, um, I've always done missions, and I've done missions with kids and 
that's just kind of my comfort zone and where I'd like to go to. And the Lord was like, you know, you need to do something different. And I was like, mm, how about no? I'm just, and so I ended up going on Portland, obviously, and it really challenged me. It brought me out of my comfort zone. And um, on, Clayton was talking about Union Gospel Mission, where we were, um, the first day we went there and we were just like talking to people and so I hadn't talked to anyone. I was just like, because it's hard, you know, to go up to someone and just sit with them and talk to them when they're focused on totally not you. And so I went up to a lady and I was like, just had my confidence and I was like, hi, like, how are you? And she was like, you know what, I'm just going to sit here in peace until 345 with my water. Thank you, though. And I was like, oh, okay, um, have a good day. And so I just walked back and I was like, okay, well, okay, Lord, like, I've been praying for an opportunity. I guess that wasn't it. And so then I saw a guy sitting over in the corner. He was in his late 50s, early 60s, didn't end up finding out his age, but um, he had a dog with him. And so I was like, that's a good conversation piece. And so I went up to him, and I, um, his name was Sam, and I ended up talking to him for about an hour and just learning a lot about him and his story. And then um, Brenna came over, and she, because she wanted me to introduce her to him, and we talked to him, and then he was like, well, y'all just keep me in your prayers. And we were like, okay, and... Um, but he, we had never talked about religion, which I was really just upset about the fact that I had an hour to talk to him, but I never really brought it up. And so then the next day, we, um, for lunch, we packed a lunch for ourselves and for someone else. And we would walk around downtown Portland and just find some, someone to give it to. And so I ended up seeing the same guy I talked to the night before, which was really cool, definitely a God thing, because there's so many different people. And so I got to talk to him for another, like, probably two and a half hours and just have some really, really good conversation with him, and I asked him um, about religion, and then I asked him if he died, I was like, if you died today, Sam, do you think that you would go to heaven or hell, and he said, I think that I would go to heaven, he said, I don't know about my family, and but I really think that I would go to heaven, and that just shook me, because I was like, you know, he's gone through all this stuff, like, that's really amazing that he has a relationship with God, and he said, um, you know, Channing, I get, like, I think that God carries us through our lives, and, like, he's there with us, but, um, like, I don't understand why he would give us such a hard road if he's the one having to carry us through it, and that was something that just kind of stuck with me from our conversation, and um, I just, I didn't know how to answer. I was like, you know, I don't know why God um, has given you a divorce, and, like, your kids are in jail. I don't know why, and I just got to pray with him, and just, it was just cool to see that, um, I got to talk to him twice, even though I missed my first opportunity to share Christ with him. I got to talk with, with him about it the second time I saw him. So uh, Portland is a great trip, and I definitely would recommend it. So. I am going to let one more person. He's going to share just for a second because he doesn't talk much. So, Jayton, you want to share? So, yeah, Portland is uh, an amazing trip. I really do recommend it, too. Um, but also, it's very interesting. Um, you really do see, like, both sides of the spectrum of, like, you're walking down the street and you see, like, 30 homeless people just, like, sprawled out and drugged out. And then you look on the other side of the street and you see, like, uh, girls just, like, decked out in, like, Gucci and, like, uh, Louis Vuitton handbags and stuff. And so it's, like, you really see both sides of the, sides of the coin. Um, and a lot of interesting things happen on this trip. Uh, Channing getting hit with a bag, thrown by a homeless person. And, uh... Benjamin getting attacked by this lady we call Two Turn Tina. <laughs> and she liked him a little too much, so she he kind of attacked him. But And then uh, Bullen's crazy driving sometimes. So, uh, yeah, that was interesting. But one of the main stories that impacted me the most was we were walking around the last night, and we found this guy, and he was kind of turning around. We were just, like, handing out supplies, like coffee and food and stuff. And we found this guy that we wanted to talk to, so we went up to him. And he turned around and he immediately started like just pouring out his life to us. And he just started crying and like really pouring out his life and really just saying like, like he doesn't feel God anymore. Like he doesn't feel the presence of God. And so we like asked if we could lay hands on him and we did. And we led him into prayer to Christ. So that was good. So like I said, we're done. But Portland is a really, really hard, hard mission trip. But it's one of the things we got asked if we were Mormon and if we were Jehovah Witness. And it was cool because we were able to say we're just a group of kids from Texas that love Jesus. And that spoke more than anything to the people that we were able to minister to. And so I challenge you, like, wherever you are, like, look at homeless people. There's somebody's son. There's somebody's daughter. 
They're somebody's friend. So look them in the eye and treat them like real people. Coach Neil.